when we had a comment to that last um, recording, notice the beginning of the word ha. It's got the ah sound of God. Ah. Amazed awe and wonder. Praise of God. Ah. Rem. In our understanding, in our English, rem is associated with remember. Ha. Rem. I, 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 me, how am I? There's a lot in that word. And what I think I'm stumbling across is that sound is a universal language. I can tell from the sounds you're using, though I have no past knowledge of the definition of the words you think you're using. I can tell from the sounds what you wish to communicate to me. And when you sing out, Har am I, you're singing out to me something about the fullness of God and myself to be remembered pretty close to God is our Heavenly Father. Wow, what a call from the Mariah, whether they were aware of this or not. They were crying out the universal language of welcome you are my son. Come to me, return to me. Return into my embrace and rescue. You are so welcome. How am I? Thank you, Dad. Adding this note uh, a lot later, I mean, this is months, months later, as you can tell by the numbering. Um, well, you probably can't tell by the numbering, but let me add the point. When you speak in tongues, Shalama Tia Kia Kia Pashataramate Haramai Tia Pakea. When you speak in tongues, you're using sounds. Uh, you might say pure sounds spontaneously. And you're trusting the Holy Spirit to choose the sounds. You don't know the words. You don't even know the purpose of the speaking in tongues. You're just spontaneously led to speak in tongues. And you trust it to God that he says the right words for you, the Holy Spirit speaks through you. It's a way of surrendering all to God, the very power of your creativity, your voice. Remember God spoke all existence, all creation into existence. He simply spoke it. That's the sort of um, Hebrew scripture here. Yeah. You surrender this sovereign power of creativity into the hands of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. You may ne most probably never spoken in tongues. Well, never been aware of it. But you are certainly able. You do it by faith, of course. To the world is gibberish nonsense but the world will pass away. Our God will not. And nor will you. For he gives you life eternal. Shalama, Shalama, Shalama. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. And to say that uh, 
Shalimar seems to be associated with the perfumed fragrance, the, the Taj Mahal commemorates. Hmm, that's a surprise. I wouldn't have thought of that. But it's also associated with three gardens in three of the Indian cities. And of course a garden has the association in Hebrew understanding with the Garden of Eden. So it is to my mind Apparently, the fragrance of the Garden of Eden that wafts, I think that's the word, isn't it? That's a good old word, out of the garden to the country beyond. perfume scent of Eden that we can smell here. Mm, smell's not a good word. I think I should say sense. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. And I'm pressed to say that scent And scent, the ambiguity of that word. The scent of something it sort of bears witness to, doesn't it? It's a trace back to the garden. The scent coming from the garden is a trace back. Remember, you are scent into the world. To preach the kingdom, uh, which is life eternal, that it's available to all. Who want with their heart to own the great high card as their dad, their heavenly father. This is the very essence of John 17, the Jesus story. He is the sent one, sent, so that you find your way back to your true home. Like the prodigal. Hmm. Thank you, Dad. Yes, you see, the, the prodigal remembered that he was his father's son, which is why, as I understand it, John 17, so I've given them your name. I've finished the work that thou gavest to me to do. And the name is Father, you see. If you hold firmly to this relationship, understanding between you and your Heavenly Father, that he's your Heavenly Father, your Dad, you find your way back fast. It's the rock, the foundation on which Life eternal is built. This is life eternal to know thee, the only true God. To know him as your heavenly father, you as child. Bless you. You are blessed, fantastically blessed. But you do need to do it. Someone pointed out to me yesterday that 
we've stopped preaching, you know, bad things follow from bad activity. And our children don't realize this, they just hear good things and the good and praise. But they need to know that wrong actions bring sadness, harm, great distress to others and to yourself. They need to know this, not to feel guilty when they um, do wrong things, but to know, ah, oh, this is not the way. I'm going the other way. I'm going back to my Heavenly Father. I return. That they be rescued and that they be a rescue to those around them. It's not that God doesn't love and care for them when they go the wrong way. He's there all the more in a sense because they so need him at such times. But it is a great difficulty to them. And we and our Heavenly Father would so like to spare them such difficulty by simply teaching them the right way. This is not an arrogance, this is a loving kindness and a great concern. But we don't want any creature to suffer. Not any person in any dimension. Anything that can suffer pain and sorrow and anguish and regret and sadness and joy and beauty and goodness and love. We want to rescue them into that, Lord, to all goodness and rescue. Thank you that we are co-creators with you, Dad, our Heavenly Father. We know we slow you up at times, just a little. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad.